Hello everyone, welcome back. We are talking about Spawn today. So I recently put up a poll um, saying, asking the question, is Spawn one of the most overrated comic series of all time? And it got a pretty significant response. And it is split right down the middle. For majority of this poll, it has been 50-50. It's actually been our most successful poll yet that we put out. So I feel like I had to make a video about this. Spawn seems to be an extremely polarizing run, extremely polarizing character. I've just finished reading the first 15 issues. So I did not read Spawn in the 90s. I did not read that as a kid. I had the toys. I collected, um, you know, I, I had the McFarlane toys. They had all the chains. They had all the horns. They had the, the spikes, the... I mean, the, the, the toys were actually like sharp to the touch. And, uh, you know, they were violent looking and bloody. I mean, they were so much different than all my other figures. So Spawn, I was very aware of Spawn, but I did not read the books at that time. I saw the movie as a kid, and I loved it as a kid. I watched it here recently. It is literally unwatchable now. If you haven't seen it, it's, uh, what is it? Is it Charlie or Martin Sheen? Um, oh, it's bad bad i've read many todd mcfarlane books i'm you know i'm i'm more experienced in the comic game now so i said you know what i'm going to give it a shake so i decided to read it in the new compendiums that have just come out by image a paperback book similar to an invincible collection these compendiums so you will get issues one through 50 in these compendiums and i've actually got volume two coming out uh coming to me pretty soon. So, um, like I said, I have no nostalgia with Spawn. So when I'm reading this, I'm looking at this through a truly objective lens. I'm looking at this based on other uh, books that I've read, uh, other books that have come out from that time period, and man, it, it's not good. Spawn is not good. And I know I'm like probably going to lose like half the viewers right now, but this is my opinion and and let me let me at least say it so let me start off by saying there are some good things with the book the book is very creative and i have to i'm going to look at it from that lens of when it was released i am sure there is nothing that came out at that time like this the paper quality is significantly better like just in these single issues i mean it's thick quality paper which image has continued to do to this day in comparison to Marvel and DC's just trash paper, the cheapest possible paper, and the covers are thicker, um, you know, just the quality of the printing is better. As far as like a, a better quality part product, Image had it, man. Spawn had it. Um, black in, in between the panels. So all other uh, comics of that time period, you know, it was white. It was on that that newsstand type paper where it's it's white in between the panels. You had black where characters, like the chains of Spawn, the cape of Spawn is flowing and exploding out of the panels. I mean, for what it was doing, it was revolutionary at that time. Now, reading comic books in 2022, none of that is uncommon. Those things happen every single week. So... Spawn, I feel like, may have laid that groundwork for what was to come. As far as the art style, uh, man, Todd's lines and his, his, his work is pretty incredible. It's vicious looking, it's bloody, it's nasty, but man, I don't know what the hell's going on half the time in these panels. Like, I'm looking at this and he's battling the Violator, which is the big bad in the beginning. It's, it's, He's the clown, and he has this alternate, um, I mean, I guess that's his true form. He has multiple forms. The Violator and him are clashing, and it, there's so much going on. It's so busy. It's so cluttered. You can't even tell what is happening. Um, chains are flying. Capes are flying. And then let's get into the writing. Todd is verbose, uh, to put it mildly. And it does not add to the story. So one of the big things that just straight out rip off 
is these newscaster um, scenes where there's an entire page where there's three panels of just dense paragraphs of these different news uh, stations like I believe there's E uh, like entertainment uh, there's uh, CNN and then there's one other one where it's like it's giving backstory to what is happening in the world as it respond as it, as it responds to spawn and as it reacts to spawn and it it adds nothing it's a direct ripoff of Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller so Frank Miller uses that to establish this world of Gotham and it, it works like it it's it was creative it was inventive it, it it's kind of special for that book it's pretty obvious Todd just has completely ripped that off what's very telling is when Todd has these additional writers come in specifically um, in issue eight he has Alan Moore and then in issue nine Neil Gaiman and then later on he has Grant Morrison which I haven't read those yet Alan Moore's issue is so significantly better <laughs> that it's it's all it's so obvious that someone else has writ written this that it, it makes Todd look bad and I realize what he was doing but you have heavy hitters like Alan Moore, the best writer of Swamp Thing, uh, From Hell, the list goes on and on and on. And then you have heavy hitters like Neil Gaiman, you know, possibly the greatest graphic novel of all time in, San in Sandman. I mean, what are you thinking? Like, yeah, you put those names on your books, but don't you realize that that's going to make you look bad? Because his writing is just not even close. There is no continuous story with Spawn. So there's many stories. So it's so it's Al Simmons, Simmons coming to grips with his new his new powers, his new abilities, and then the loss of his wife, who he now sees as had a child, and he has to see all that happen. He was unable to give her a child, and he feels like a failed man. That's one story, which it's funny that I mentioned it first, because it is the most interesting story of Spawn. It's not him fighting the violator in an alleyway with Al Simmons living amongst the, the homeless people, that's not the interesting story to me. And then all of this this hellscape, this, this satanic devil idea, I mean, that's edgy. That's cool. That's like, why, why are we not getting more of that? It's more of that. It, it, it's, he's trying to make it a superhero. So he's trying to to make Spawn this, you know, this caped crusader almost of, you know, him him protecting people, but it it just doesn't make any sense. Like it's um, and and the hero the the, the, the superhero parts of this book are just poorly done. That they, they've been done better so many times over. So it doesn't know what kind of story it wants to be, and there's an overarching part of this story about how Spawn uses his powers. And then they fail, they're they're basically depleting and they're failing him over time and there's this clock. That's to give the story stakes, I'm assuming, but it, it fails as well because it's not followed up on consistently enough. As the reader, you forget that there's even a clock. And then there's just a big panel of a clock that has numbers, which I'm sure is explained later, but it, I mean, come on, I'm 15 issues in and this has not been fleshed out yet. I don't know. So I've bought, like I said, I bought the second compendium. It goes all the way to issue 100, and Spawn is currently ongoing. We re recently had Spawn spinoffs, uh, King Spawn, uh, I believe Gunslinger Spawn, and and those look interesting. I mean, the, the covers are cool. I mean, the cover art has always been cool. Greg Capullo uh, with the art, Tom McFarlane with the covers. I mean, it's a powerhouse team but it you ever heard the saying 10 feet wide and an inch deep that's what it is it's just shallow it just feels hollow i guess looking at this spawn is a product of its time um it it fails on another level in the collective the collectible aspect so todd mcfarlane is very aware of the collectability of comics i mean he does these signings he does you know limited editions limited print runs 
you know, he's very aware of the collectible nature of comics and almost to the point where it's exploitative, in my opinion. But from a collect collection standpoint, I, I, you see I've got two copies of Spawn Number 1. I mean, this book has been printed to death. This book is out there. Like, it's just not rare. Like, there's just too many of them. Um, it's... It's just a failure from that perspective as well. I think it's. I still think it's an interesting property that could be adapted to the live screen or the big screen very, very well. I mean, um, it, it's it's got it's got that potential for sure. Which I think there still is some room for these books to get more valuable. Overall, it's 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 a half baked. Uh, idea, I think. I don't know. I don't think. I don't know whether it wants to be a noir. Is it a mind trip? Is it a superhero story? But for a product of its time, when it came out, it was new. It was inventive. It very likely paved the road for where we are at now with comics. So it is an important book, and I I completely understand why the poll I posted was so divisive because. I think nostalgia runs high for this this series, as evidenced by we're on issue 300 and something now. It's still going. Um, I just think as a as a new reader of Spawn, as a as a reader in 2022, this does just not hit. It does not hit. Let me know what you guys think, which I'm sure you will. I'm sure this will be a very divisive video. If at any point in time you like this video, give the thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching. Take care.